A night game at Bryant-Denny Stadium. It's one of, if not the greatest, atmosphere in all of college football. And for one warm October evening in 1994, it was the setting for an offensive duel for the ages. 1994 was a season of redemption for Alabama. The Crimson Tide had failed in its quest to defend the national championship, and starting quarterback Jay Barker had to sit on the sidelines with an injury as the Tide lost the 1993 SEC title game to Florida. While no one could question Barker's ability to win, many believed he wasn't capable of passing the team to victory. And with head coach Gene Stallings' run-first defensive philosophy, he never really had to. But when Eric Zier and the Georgia Bulldogs came to town, Barker would get his chance. It was the quarterback with all the stats versus the quarterback who just won. It was nighttime at Bryant-Denny, and it was about to become another Crimson Classic. Welcome to another installment of Crimson Classics. I'm Gary Harris. In 1994, the Alabama Crimson Tide was trying to reestablish the form that had led the school to its 12th national championship just two years earlier in 1992. Quarterback Jay Barker was now a senior and on his way to becoming the winningest quarterback in Alabama history. He was also the leader of a senior group that would finish as one of the greatest classes in Crimson Tide lore. 1993 had not ended well for the Tide. Bama was upset by LSU, snapping an undefeated streak which stretched all the way back to early 1991. Then Barker was injured during the Iron Bowl as Bama saw the Auburn Tigers get the win to cap off an undefeated season of their own. As Barker rehabbed to get ready for the 94 season, head coach Gene Stallings, possibly on a suggestion by then athletics director Hootie Ingram, brought in Homer Smith as offensive coordinator to help inject life into a conservative, albeit successful offense. I've got a feeling, and I've never talked to Gene Stallings about this and never would, that he probably would not have chosen Homer, but after looking at his credentials and talking to him, you know, I think he said, this is a guy who's a tough guy, he knows football, he's the right kind of guy, football means a lot to him. Uh, I think everything about Homer, he would have liked. This would be Coach Homer Smith's second tenure at Alabama. He served as offensive coordinator under Bill Curry as well. And coaching at Alabama was the pinnacle of my coaching career. Uh, so that's the main thing. They were different, certainly, in approaches to offensive football and defensive football, but they were both uh, very successful periods, and I love to look back on them. The new OC liked what he saw in his quarterback, even before he saw him on the field. Smith knew he had something in Barker just from watching him rehab his injured knee. He was recovering from a knee injury, and he did the best job that I saw in all of my years of coaching in rehabilitating an injury. He worked on that knee until he was actually in better shape, I think, than he was when he was injured. Uh, I salute him for that. The quarterback also liked working with the new offensive coordinator. Not only was Smith known for the quarterback-friendly West Coast offense, he was an extremely positive influence for his players. He's not a yeller at all, and actually he's a huge confidence builder. I'll never forget one of the first games that I played, um, and I went to the headsets, and he said, you look like Joe Montana out there. You know, all this kind of, He's always like that, always very positive about his approach. It's just different. I think he really understands the psyche of a quarterback. Despite all the changes, 1994 started out very similar to the other seasons for Bama under Stallings, with wins over UT Chattanooga, Vanderbilt, Arkansas, and Tulane. Bama was 4-0, but the offensive explosion many fans were expecting under Homer Smith had not come. There were many factors as to why, but one unmistakable reason was that a playmaker had not yet stepped up after David Palmer left Alabama early to go to the NFL. I have decided to forego my senior season at University of Alabama and make it available in 1994 draft. He was always a tremendous threat, such an incredible athlete. Um, I've never seen anything like him. 
absolutely never seen anything like him. And, and definitely he was going to be missed. But we had guys that, that uh, would play hard and we knew would step up and just do what we had to do. That brings us to October 1st, 1994. Eric Zier and the Georgia Bulldogs were coming to Tuscaloosa to take on the Crimson Tide. It was a night game, nationally televised by ESPN. Zaire was on an all-out assault of the record books, and it was very likely that he would become the SEC's all-time leading passer during this game. It was an electric atmosphere, one that was not lost on the visitors from Athens. And for the first time on Crimson Classics, we'll hear from one of those visitors. I remember specifically about this game several hours before the game. Uh, we get there, we get off the bus and walk into the stadium just to walk out on the field before the game. And uh, the student section uh, in the stadium was already filled. And, uh, and you could already tell the electricity uh, just in the air uh, was going to be something special. That was uh, as bad an electric stadium as anybody that I've known has ever been in uh, for a non-national championship type game. Bryant Denny was electric that night. The bands were playing, the, the fans were into it. To see it in that atmosphere, the fans had been anticipating it all day long. There have been so many great games played at Bryant Denny Stadium, and I'm sure there'll be other great ones, but none will ever, as far as I'm concerned, match the 94 Georgia game. For all the fans that were part of the electric atmosphere that evening, and for those watching on TV too, the question was would Bama's vaunted defense? be able to keep Georgia's high-powered offense in check. After all, it was expected that Zyre and company would put up big numbers. But few would have predicted what the Bama offense had in store. First quarter action from Brian Denny Stadium when we return here on Crimson Classics. Bryant Denny Stadium was packed on that warm October evening. The Georgia Bulldogs won the toss, and to no one's surprise, head coach Ray Goff elected to receive the football and get his high powered offense right out on the field. Playboy All American Eric Zire had completed more passes in his career than Jay Barker had attempted. Everyone, and I mean everyone, was overlooking Jay. And maybe in some people's eyes, you know, Eric Zire was, was a little higher than, than Jay Barker. So Jay had to kind of step up his game a little bit to match Eric. But no matter how good the Bulldog quarterback is, the two things Georgia must try to do to win the ball game is run the ball and be successful on first down. And that's not an easy feat when you're talking about the Bama defense. Let's play ball. Zaire, who needs only 224 yards to become the SEC's all-time leading passer, brings the Bulldogs to the line. They surprised the Bama defense with a draw to Larry Bowie for nine yards. Bowie is a native of Aniston. Zaire rolls the pocket and then finds Jeff Thomas for 15 yards and a first down. Georgia tries another draw on first down, but Bowie gets only a yard before sophomore Ralph Staten makes the stop. The Bulldogs try a screen. But Hassan Graham just gets back to the line of scrimmage. Senior Tommy Johnson with the tackle. Bama's got the dogs right where they want them. Third and long, but Zaire rolls out of the pocket, picks up a nice block, and finds Bryce Hunter for the first down. Another draw for Georgia. Bowie gains four before Staten makes another tackle. Bowie again. This time the pitch gains just one, though, before Staten and Cedric Samuel combine to make the tackle. Ralph was playing with a banged up elbow, but you couldn't tell it by his play on the field. With four minutes gone in the first quarter, the dogs are controlling the clock. Zaire looks to pass from the gun. Good coverage downfield, but the Georgia quarterback scrambles for eight yards and another Bulldog first down. When you've got a defense with as much speed uh, as, as Alabama you know, had at the time or even does today, 
Uh, you've got to be able to run the football uh, to slow down those defensive linemen. Uh, so I'm obviously in the world of play action and, and being able to hold linebackers for a step uh, to get behind them or create a few different throwing lanes uh, is hugely important. When you have backs in the backfield, uh, you're going to be able to protect the quarterback a little bit better because they're going to be able to help off the edge and, uh, and, and max protect to pick up some blitzes that otherwise you couldn't do. Zire pitches to the versatile Hines Ward on first down, but he gets only one before Samuel and Willie Gaston bring him down. Zire on a screen to Ward, but Sam Shade and Ozell Powell do a great job stopping the underneath pass for a gain of just one. Bama again has the dogs in third and long, but that's been the down. Georgia has made it happen on this drive. Here, Zire finds Bryce Hunter for 16 yards and yet another Georgia first down. The Bulldogs are now in the tied red zone, but Zire throws his first two incomplete passes of the game. The tide was offsides. It's third and five from the Bama nine. Zaire finds tight end James Warner for the touchdown. The PAT made it seven nothing Georgia. The Bulldogs drive went 80 yards in 14 plays, chewing up six and a half minutes off the clock. It culminated with the first passing touchdown giving up by the Bama defense all season. It was a big drive, being able to start the game like that and cap it off uh, with a touchdown. Uh, the way we did it was it was extremely important for the rest of the game. And that, that play uh, that we scored on was actually the same play that we ran uh, uh, later in the game and uh, with, a, with the fourth touchdown uh, that we had. Same exact play, just a different read on it where the tight end runs a little skinny post uh, through the middle and the read goes from there down to a running back uh, that's on a little under route that comes underneath that. Uh, that, that post. Uh, James was the first option on that. Uh, he ran a great route. He was there. Uh, and then we were you know, fortunate enough to execute and, and get on the board to really give us a lot of confidence and momentum. Confidence and momentum for one team and for the other, uncertainty. And for one of its players in particular, a redshirt freshman making his first start. We played Tulane the week before and I played a good bit in that game. And we had a meeting the following Monday Coach Fuller entered the meeting room and he asked me how I thought I played against Tulane. I thought, told him I thought I played as hard as I could and thought I played decent. And uh, he told me right then, he said, well, you better pick it up because you're starting. Bama's first drive doesn't go well. Barker gets sacked on first down. Sherman loses five on second. Then Barker finds Todrick Malone, but short of the first down. The Tide must punt it away. Zaire continues to have the hot hand, finding Jerry German for a gain of five on first down. Yet another draw play on second down. Larry Bowie gains four before Staten and Samuel bring him down. It's third and short, and Georgia gets it into the hands of a playmaker. Hines Ward takes the handoff and weaves through the Bama defense on his way to a 49-yard gain. With the dogs threatening to score again, it was time for the Bama D to step up. Daryl Blackburn and Brian Thornton stuffed Bowie on first down. Inside the 20 now, Zyre completes a pass to Bowie, but Dwayne Rudd puts his hat on the ball, and Fort Payne's Eric Turner picks the ball out of midair. Nice job and a much needed big play by the Bama D. But Zyre and the whole Georgia offense were still looking good. When you're able to go out and step on the field and execute, uh, obviously things like turnovers, uh, they, they will catch up to you. The Crimson Tide offense gets back on the field, hoping to fare better than on the first drive. It starts out well as Barker finds Malone for a gain of 10 and a first down. From the 37, Bama tries a screen pass to Terran Lynch, but Georgia's Randall Gottfried sniffs it out for a five-yard loss. On second and 15, Barker's pass is complete to Curtis Brown for a 10-yard gain. On third and five, Bama sticks with the pass as Barker hits Malone on an underneath route and some shifty moves gets Todrick 11 yards and the first down. Bama tries Sherman Williams at left end on first down and he gains five before he gets hit by Robert Edwards and others. On Bama's first trip to Georgia's side of the field, Homer Smith calls a little razzle dazzle. Jay fakes it to Williams and tosses it to Marcel West on the end around. West gains 11 before he's tripped up. 
An Alabama penalty, then a Georgia penalty, made it second and three from the Bulldogs 24 as time expired in the first quarter. It was an exciting 15 minutes, but as we like to say in the television business, you ain't seen nothing yet. Second quarter action when we return here to Crimson Classics. The fact that the Tide was only down 7 to nothing after the first quarter was an amazing feat into itself. Bulldog quarterback Eric Zire had Bama on its heels, going 8 for 10 for 138 yards, including the first passing touchdown given up by the Tide that season. But the Bama D, always opportunistic, got the timely turnover they needed. The Tide offense struggled at first, but Jay Barker was 6 for 6 and moving Bama down the field. Let's pick up the action now with Eli Gold and Doug Layton on the Alabama Radio Network. Second and three, Bama now as we're back to work. Football out the Georgia 24. The give to Sherman Williams. He's down to the 21 yard line. Darn close to first down yardage. Third and inches from the 21 and a half. The backs are stacked. Barker's gonna do it himself. It looked as though he was repelled at the first point of impact. And Rom Gilbert, the referee's leaning all the way didn't down, make didn't make it. No. Still fourth down now, and those same inches for Alabama. What's going to happen here from the 21 of Georgia? Fourth and inches from the 21. Big play right here. Barker downstairs. He's got it. He's to the 20-yard line. First and 10 from the 20. On the give, Sherman Williams finds a hole left side east of the 18-yard line. Second and eight from the 18. Pitch back, Williams cuts inside the block of Malone. He gets drilled at the 17. He may pick up a yard. Parker under center cause. He steps back and look. Jay's throwing across the middle. Great catch for Alabama. Turn it around. He reaches out and gets the first down grab inside the 10 to about the seven yard line. Big, big reception for the junior from Johns Island, South Carolina. His 10th catch of the year as he burned Robert Edwards. Oh, and he was cutting across the middle too, and that's where you're gonna get branded when you catch the football. Here now the handoff to Williams, cuts inside a pretty block, gets down to the six yard line. Second and goal from the six, backs are split. Wide outs are tight, except for Brown on the left. Parker's going that way, a timing pattern in the corner of the end zone. Just overthrows Curtis Brown, missing by the fingertips in the deep left corner of the end zone. Third and goal from the Georgia six. Single setback is Williams. Parker's got it, fakes the give to Sherman, gives to Tarrant Lynch. He'll find an opening. The extra point tied the game at seven. Following the fumble, Bama kept the ball for 16 plays in eight and a half minutes. That's ball control, and that's one way to hold down the other team's high-powered offense. With the game now tied, Alabama's D holds the dogs for a three and out. So Georgia sends in Dax Langley for the punt, and he booms it, 54 yards. But Malone backpedals and can't control it. Will Muschamp recovers for Georgia, but after the refs discuss it, it's decided he was out of bounds and it remains Bama's ball. Georgia coach Ray Goff calls timeout to voice his displeasure with the referees, but the call will stand. With many of the Bulldog players still fuming over the call, Sherman Williams goes around right in for three yards. On second and seven, Lynch gets the ball in the draw. He gains four before Randall Godfrey makes the stop. On third and three, Barker rolls to his left and looks for Malone. Unfortunately, the pass is just out of his reach, bringing up fourth down. Brian Dill is back to punt for Bama. He boots a 43-yarder that Chris McCraney fair catches at the Georgia 36. On first down, Zyre utilizes play action and finds Bryce Hunter on a crossing pattern. Hunter gains 16 before Eric Turner brings him down. Back in Bama territory, Georgia goes to the draw. Ward gains six before Willie Gaston and Brian Thornton make the tackle. On second and four, Ward again gets the call in the draw, but Damian Jeffries gets enough of him to knock him down for no gain. Ward again gets the ball, this time with an underhand shuttle pass. He gains six and the first down before Samuel and Shade bring him down. 
First down for Georgia. Zaire hits Jeff Thomas, who gains eight before Willie Gaston comes up to make the play. Zaire again finds German. Tommy Johnson makes the hit and causes a fumble, but luckily for the dogs, it goes out of bounds. First down, Georgia at the Bama 23. Zaire capitalizes on the lucky break as he finds Hassan Graham on a go pattern in the end zone for the touchdown. The extra point makes it 14 to seven, Georgia. Well, first of all, just a great catch uh, by Hassan on that play. Uh, that was really just an all-go type pattern where we had uh, two receivers on, on the right side of the field and both ran go routes uh, where the inside receiver is going to run a skinny post trying to influence the uh, safety that's uh, on top of him inside some. Uh, and then the outside receiver, which was Hassan, just takes off with an outside release, gets outside. And, and runs down as fast as he can go down the sideline. After a Rondi Gibson kickoff return to the Bama 31, the tight offense again took the field, but with a noticeable change. Backup quarterback Brian Bergdorf was in for Bama. Stallings was sending Barker, despite being seven for nine in the game, a message. A message that Jay still remembers to this day, but thinks was all part of the plan. You know, it's so funny because that's, in my career, probably the greatest game for me personally from a statistical standpoint. And then also just when I was able to share my faith afterwards, I'd never been benched before. And I got pulled to the sideline, Coach Stallings said, we're gonna let Brian play a couple of series and just see what happens. And, you know, I just come off an injury. Our office was struggling. We had not all of a sudden begin to click yet. Wouldn't really click to the second half of that game. And I'm like, man, this may be it. You know, Brian goes in and has great success. I don't wish him ill will. I want him to do well. I want our office to do well. I want us just to win the game and try to help him from this vantage point. So Coach Stallings told me, said, just sit here. You watch for a little while. Maybe, you know, you'll see things better. And, in a, you know, in a little bit, I was kind of upset. You know, I was kind of mad that, you know, here I am, won all these games. You're putting me on the bench as your starting quarterback. Now I'm, you know, over here watching and not, not injured, nothing like that. Well, at that time, a group of my buddies in the FCA came around me and they said, hey, we just want to pray for you. And they prayed for me at that time. And they said, hey, God, we just pray that you lift Jay up tonight so that he may lift you up. And um, so for me, that was all humbled at that point in time, which would be the greatest game because everybody says, what's the greatest, Georgia? What's the worst, Georgia? But at the same time, too, it's preparing my heart for what would happen after the game. To come back and, and win the game and have a chance to share my faith on national TV um, was unbelievable. So. That, to me, it was more than just me playing the game. I think God was preparing my heart for what would happen after the game. On Bergdorf's first play, Bama tries play action, but the pass intended for Malone is too high. On second down, Bama again goes to the air, and again, Bergdorf's pass is too high for Malone. Bergdorf tries to find Taurus Turner underneath, but Randall Gottfried has tight coverage, and it's three and out for Bergdorf and Bama. Georgia takes over after the Bama punt and goes with the run. Damian Jeffries from Sylacauga brings Ward down for a loss of two. Bama's momentum was short-lived as Zaire finds Hassan Graham crossing the field. Graham gains 42 before Deshae Townsend knocks him out of bounds. First down from the Bama 28, Zaire tosses it to Ward who gains three before Lawton, Oklahoma's Matt Parker makes the tackle. Georgia goes to Ward again, who goes straight up the middle, gaining 19 yards before Cedric Samuel comes up to make the shoestring stop. From the Bama six, Georgia tries Selma Callaway up the middle, but Dwayne Rudd makes the tackle. The Bulldogs again try to pound the tide with the run. Hines Ward takes the handoff and is met by a host of Bama tackles. Under a minute left in the half, and it's third and goal for Georgia. Zaire finds Bryce Hunter just past the goal line for the touchdown. After the PAT, Bama is looking at a 14-point deficit with 57 seconds left to play in the half. Could the offense respond? I remember Coach Stallings coming to me and said, hey, I'm going to put you back in. Brian had not had success. You know, you're a little bit of your prize going, okay, now you want me back in, you know, all this kind of stuff. But, you know, I just had to swallow that, go out there on the field. and. Led the team down through Tony, uh, Tony Johnson, a couple passes, set up the field goal. Michael Proctor had an outstanding night that night, too. I mean, you know, credit him, the defense, offensive line, everybody is what made that game what it was. But he came in and made some key kicks at opportune times in order to keep us in position to come back and win that game. Barker back at quarterback for one of his specialties, the two minute drill. On first down, he hits Curtis Brown for a gain of 16. The tied offense hurries to the line, but Barker gets flushed from the pocket and throws one at the feet of Sherman Williams.
On second down, Barker eludes the rush and finds Brown again on the sidelines for 13 yards and another Alabama first down. From midfield, Barker is back to pass. Brown makes another catch, this one diving for a nine-yard gain. He's ruled inbounds, and Alabama has all three timeouts, so the Tide uses one here with 13 seconds left. Alabama needs to gain at least 10 more yards to get into Michael Proctor's range. Barker does that and some more, finding Tony Johnson for a gain of 26 down to the Georgia 15. The Tide calls timeout with five seconds left. Proctor lines up for the 33-yard attempt. Oh, it hits the upright, but still goes through. It's 21-10 instead of 21-7 Georgia at the half. The Georgia offense looked great for most of the first half, but Bama hung in there and stole some momentum with that last second field goal. Still, halftime adjustments were needed. The second half of the 1994 Georgia-Alabama game is coming up here on Crimson Classics. As the Tide and Bulldogs went to their locker rooms at halftime, it was clear that Alabama would have to make some adjustments on defense. But the Tide still had confidence from a senior class that would go down as one of the greatest ever and from a Bryant-Denny crowd that was still as loud as ever. Would that be enough? The Bama players sure thought so, and so did Coach Stallings. Well, he, he just told us the things that we can do better and where we were, were slacking at, and we still we were still in this game that you know we could win this game and that's what he told us and and we all felt like we could and we felt like that when it came to the fourth quarter it didn't matter what the score was that we were going to win the fourth quarter uh, if i just have one trait in a player just one i love the competitor the guy that would just compete and if you all of a sudden you've got 11 out there competing and they're all competing on offense and then they all compete in the kicking game and they all compete on defense it's hard to beat a guy like that. And uh, we were just blessed with a lot of competitors during that uh, four-year period. Georgia still had to be confident, but that Proctor field goal going into halftime reminded the dogs that this was Alabama they were playing. And they were playing the Tide in Bryant-Denny Stadium, where historically they had not had much success. But the fact that that hits the upright and goes in and uh, the fact that that time that we had never won uh, there in Bryant-Denny Stadium, uh, you know, all of a sudden you, you, you start to think, boy, are, are the ghosts going to come back and, and get us, right? Well, we still walked into that locker room very confident about uh, where we were and, and, the, and how we were executing our game plan. Uh, so we still felt very good, but there's no question, you see a ball hit the upright and still go in. Uh, some of those thoughts start to creep in a little bit uh, into your mind. The Alabama fans never gave up. I mean, they never gave up. They kept cheering and kept, and kept kind of fighting and willing their team to come back and win. And you talk to players, and they'll tell you, look, when you're at home, the fans can lift you up and make you uh, do things that are just incredible and spectacular. And, and that was the case that night because the fans were just really into it. And into it they were as Georgia kicked off to begin the second half. Rondy Gibson receives the kick and returns it out to the Bama 24. Barker leads the troops out for their first second half series. It's play action on first down, and Barker hits Toddard Malone for 29 yards and a first down. Robert Edwards on the cover. Already in Georgia territory, Jay again looks to pass on first down. He gets flushed from the pocket, but again finds Malone, who holds on for an eight-yard gain. That's Todrick's fifth catch of the game. Bama stays on the ground with the hard-running Sherman Williams. He squirts ahead for four yards and the first down. Now at the Georgia 35, it's big play time for the Tide. 
Barker again uses play action. And Malone again gets behind the Georgia secondary. Barker finds him wide open, and Toderick High steps in for the touchdown. Bama was unsuccessful in its attempt at a two-point conversion, but less than two minutes into the second half, the Tide was within five at 21-16. That drive was spearheaded by Atala Alabama's Toddert Malone, who had three big catches. Yeah, Toddert and I, we came in together in 92, and we played together in the, the Alabama-Mississippi All-Star game, so I knew him a little bit from that. And then he was a great receiver. You know, he had, he had great hands, and he was really good speed and ran great routes so you know we always knew that he was going to be a you know a top player for us from the Georgia 47 Eric Zyra makes his first mistake of the game after play action he looks for Juan Daniels downfield but it's underthrown and despite being interfered with Tommy Johnson is Johnny on the spot and makes the pick the Bama offense took the field with 11 and a half minutes left in the third quarter and all the momentum. Let's listen to Eli and Doug on the Alabama Radio Network. First and 10, Bama from the 18. The handoff, Sherman Williams. He'll turn the corner out across the 20 to about the 21-yard line with 11.30 to go in this third quarter. Bama down 21-16, but a chance to march it up the field here. Second and six of the 18. Jay Barker looks for help, and he doesn't get any as he is ripped to the turf by Randall Godfrey. Third and 14 now from the 16. Backs are split. Barker to throw. Jay drops back. Jay steps up. He's going to run. He's got room to the 20, 25, 30. He slides to the 31-yard line. Yes. First down, Jay Barker. They gave him all sorts of room to run. They really did. Well, at first of all, they don't respect uh, Jay's running ability. He's not uh, that bad. He certainly doesn't uh, have the moves and the juice that a high forward has. But he is one thing, if he's anything, and that is very, de very determined and a great competitor. He just sucked it and saw the opening. First down, Alabama. Georgia with a four-man front. Jay's to throw. He steps back. He'll go on the screen left side. A little safety valve pass. No one's there to help out. So a loss of three on the plate. Here, Barker on the give. Out across the 30 to Tarrant Lynch to the 31-yard line. He'll get four yards back. John Causey is back at center. Will Friend is at right guard now on a third and seven. Bama is four of eight in third down conversions from the 31. Here's Jay Barker to throw. Jay looks. Jay throws the out pattern. Complete at midfield to Patrick Malone. First down, Alabama. He beat Randall Godfrey, who was the linebacker, isolated on him. But I'll tell you what, Barker, that time, planted a needle. It was a perfectly thrown pass. A great catch by Patrick Malone from Gadsden. And here's Barker, first and ten from midfield. Jay drops back. Everybody's covered. He'll unload. Oh, almost complete, but it does go off the arm of the intended receiver, Marcel West. Jay Barker and Eric Zier. Let's compare the numbers. Jay tonight is 16 of 19, 207 yards and a touchdown. Zier is 17 of 20, 178 yards, two TDs, and he's been intercepted once. Second and ten. Bama from midfield strike, going left to right. Single setback, Sherman Williams in the near hash mark to give it to Sherman. He tries the blocking. He finds a hole to the 45 to the 44-yard line. A pickup of six. It's third down and five now for Alabama. Causey the center. Parker double pumps, unloads, complete to the 38-yard line. It was a high pass, but that time Curtis Brown went up and beat Yancey on the play. First down, Alabama. First and 10 for the 38. Barker under heavy pressure. Jay is going down at midfield. He thought about throwing it away. He elected to eat it as Greg Wright put him down. Second and 20 now. Bam is back near midfield. Barker, two-step drop. Nothing on the right. He'll throw the safety valve left side. Complete to Lynch inside the 40 to the 38-yard line. It sets it up about a third and 10, maybe third and 11. Bam a six of 10 and third down conversion. Looking at a third and nine now from the Georgia 37. On play action. Barker has time. Barker throws to Chad T. He rips the ball away from the defender and hangs on. First down at the 25-yard line. Chad Key and Corey Johnson both going for the football. Chad Key does not miss passes. 
and the ball is thrown. It's anybody's ball. It's the defender's ball. It's the receiver. Whomever gets there and gets their hands on it gets it. And that's what happened then. Chad Key just took it away from Corey Johnson. Bama looking at a first and ten for the Georgia 25. Five and a half to go, third period. Here Barker takes two steps to the right, pitches back to Tyrant Lynch. He goes forward inside the 20 to the 19 yard line. A pickup of five with Bama on the move, trailing 21 16. This time it's a straight dive play for Alabama. That Marcus Williams diagnosis after maybe a pickup of a yard. These are big plays. Bama third and three from the 18. They're seven of 11 and third down conversions. Jay's got protection. Jay throws. It's swatted down and then up into the air it goes. So now Bama looking at a fourth down and three from the Georgia 18. Got to kick it. Here comes Michael Proctor. This will be a 36-yard field goal attempt. From this distance, 35, they will say officially. And from this distance, he is a perfect four of four this year. In the middle, snap in the spot. The end over and kick is up and good. That was 4-0-4 to go in the third. Bama is within a deuce. It is Georgia 21, Alabama 19. The Tide held the ball for seven and a half minutes, gaining 63 yards on 16 plays. The negative was they only got three points, and the missed two-point conversion earlier loomed large as Georgia got the ball back with four minutes left in the quarter. Bama down by double digits at the half is now within a touchdown, but it's Georgia's ball as we return to Crimson Classic. First and 10 from the Dogs 33, Heinz Ward finds a hole and gains 13 yards before Willie Gaston makes the tackle. Tack on another five though for a face mask. First down for midfield and Zyre eludes a blitzer to find Bryce Hunter who gains 18. John Walkers, the linebacker from Texas makes the stop. Bill Montgomery with a carry on first down. The Bama defense swarms and Walkers gets another tackle this one for no gain. Second and 10, Zyre drops back to pass. Hassan Graham gets open and makes the catch, gaining 24 yards all the way down to the Bama 7. First and goal from the 7, Georgia back on the ground with Ward. He gains two before Rudd and Walters combine to make the stop. On second and goal, Zyre is back to pass, and on the exact same play they scored on earlier in the contest, he finds Marissa Simpson for the touchdown. On the play, Zyre also set the SEC career passing yardage mark. Again, the individual uh, accolades that, that I think anybody receives are really secondary. You know, at the time, I didn't even realize uh, that, that I was close to a record. Surely had no idea that on that play uh, it, it set a record. Uh, you know, it, it is neat for the entire team that it, that it occurred in a, a game like we had against Alabama. Uh, such a great football game. So despite dominating much of the third quarter, the Tide now trailed Georgia 28 to 19. Georgia's defense stiffened and forced Bama to punt as we head into the fourth quarter. Georgia starts its first series of the fourth quarter at the 27. Hines Ward counters for six and almost bust in for another kind of six, if not for Ralph State. Georgia tries the same play again on second down, but you know what they say about going to the well too often. The Bama defense was ready and stops Ward for no gain. Third down and four for Georgia. Zyre drops back to pass, but the Tide defense gets pressure, and Darrell Blackburn and Matt Parker get the Tide's first sack of the game. The Dogs must punt it away. Can Bama move the ball and get back in this game? Let's listen to Eli and Doug to find out. First and 10, Bama now from their own 28-yard line. Jay Barker, the quarterback. Jay's got time. Jay throws complete, complete to Tarrant Lynch. He's circling over the backfield. He's to the mid 50, to the midfield stripe at the 50-yard line. Tarrant Lynch on a pickup of 22 yards, and Jay had time there to read the Wall Street Journal, and then he some. really did. He gets played without his helmet with shades on. Forrest Turner in now, spelling Lynch. Here's Barker to throw. He's going to air it out long. He's looking. He's got the wall. to the crowd, they are standing and cheering as Bama has a big touchdown strike and they're within three. 
That time, it was Malone cutting through the seam. He went by the free safety. He was not picked up by the safety, and Barker saw him all the way and rifled the ball to him. Malone, with his speed, ran under it. Nobody could catch him. Touchdown, Alabama. And when I saw him just kind of square up and kind of sit still, when I saw Todrick get even with him, I knew just lift the ball, let him run to it, and um, Todrick went and got it. I mean, it was just a – just one of those great calls. Um, you know, we executed the way it should have been executed, and Todd did a great job going and getting it. He ran a great round. After the PAT, Bama was within two points at 28-26. It's a brand new ball game. William Watts kicks off for the Tide, and the Wild Thing booms one into the end zone for the touchback. Georgia sticks to what's been successful. Hines Ward gains seven on first down. On second and three, Zyra looks for Jeff Thomas along the sideline, but the pass is too far. After a penalty negates a first down by Georgia, Zyra again looks to pass. Jerry German makes the catch and gets the Georgia first down. Ward gets the call on another first down run. He gains three before Parker and Staten make the tackle. The teams exchange penalties, bringing up second and eight. Montgomery takes the draw play for two yards. Zaire is under extreme pressure from Ralph Staten. He gets away and throws it incomplete. The tie defense thinks it's off the field, but a holding penalty on the Bama D gives Georgia new life with a first down. Ward around the corner for six. Dwayne Rudd and Mickey Kahn make the stop. After a Bama timeout, Georgia tries another draw, but the tie defense swarms and Ward is dropped for a loss of four. Another third down for Georgia. Zaire looks for Ward, but he can't make the catch. Fourth down and time to punt for the Dogs. With the Bama D holding strong, it's the Tide's turn with the pigskin. When we return, the end to an epic Saturday night battle in Tuscaloosa. Through 50 minutes of play, the Dogs and the Tide had put up 849 yards of total offense, combined for 36 first downs and 54 total points. Unfortunately, Georgia has two more than Alabama. But as we return to the action, Barker and the Bama offense are on the field trying to complete the comeback. Bama is backed up deep in its own territory, but not for long. Barker hits Sherman Williams, who gets outside for a 31-yard gain before Muschamp and Johnson make the stop. Williams gets it again, but this time Sherman is dropped for no gain. Barker is back to pass, but the Georgia pressure is too much. Frank Watts drops Barker. It's Georgia's fifth sack of the day. Barker is back to pass. He eludes a couple of defenders and dumps it off to Tarrant Lynch. It's another big play as Tarrant gets the tied first down. From midfield now, the Tide will call Williams' number again. He gains two before he's stopped by Phillip Daniels and Travis Jones. Bama tries a draw to Lynch on second and eight. Nowhere to go. It's a loss of four. Third and long, and the Tide is not yet in Proctor's field goal range. Barker is back to pass. Georgia has pressure on him, but can't bring him down. Jay gets the ball away, but it's incomplete, and the flag is illegal man downfield. The Tide will punt, and it's up to the defense with under three minutes to play. Deal is back to punt, and the senior hits a great one. It's a 50-yarder. The crowd is electric at Brian Denny and reaches a fever pitch. 
we had the ball uh, deep in our own end zone, uh, backing up at that time to where the Alabama student section was. Uh, and, and at that moment, it was one of the loudest stadiums that I've ever been in. Um, obviously because of the game and, and, and how close the game was and how good the game was, uh, the electricity, uh, it was taken up a notch or two. Uh, and being right down in, this, in the student section, uh, it was extremely difficult to communicate and to, to hear and to really get out there and go execute. Not surprisingly, Georgia looks to run the ball and the clock. Ward carries for five yards and Northport's Andre Royal there to make the stop. After a Bama timeout, Ward carries again, and Royal fills the hole for no gain. Bama calls its final timeout at the 226 mark of the fourth quarter. Zire looks to seal the game with a first down, but James Warner can't make the catch. The tide has life. And let's return to the Alabama Radio Network for the exciting finish. Hey, if this one is good, don't end up in my lap like you did at Penn State, though. I'm warning you. Okay. First and 10 from the 48-yard line. On play action, Jay Barker throwing on the out pattern incomplete for Chad Key. I'll tell you what, if Bama does pull this out, heck, you can end up in my lap if you'd like. Okay, Eli. It'll be worth second and 10 from their own 48. 2.04 to go, and Georgia leads 28-26. Jay Barker steps back. Jay is looking. Everybody's tied up. Jay is motioning. Jay is getting away from the defender. Jay is running left. Jay is on his feet. He breaks free to the 40. He's down to the 38-yard line. Unbelievable. That is going to be a first down. Second and 10 from the Georgia 38. Wide outs either way. Jay Barker has been all world tonight at quarterback for Alabama. He'll take the snap on play action. Jay steps up. Jay throws. It is complete to Johnson. Well, oh, he's got it. He's to the 20. Well, he's to the 15. He goes out of bounds. Oh, my. With a minute 38 to go in the ball game. Tony Johnson with his second reception of the night. And they don't come any bigger than that. That's absolutely. Jay Barker. I don't think I don't think he was the primary receiver, Eli. He couldn't have been. Jay was looking every which direction. And finally came up with Tony Johnson, the junior from Como, Mississippi. Back to in the eye. Here's Parker. On the give to Sherman Williams. He'll go left side to the 15-yard line. A minute and 28 seconds to go. Alabama will be looking at a second and nine with the football at the Georgia 15. To give to Tarrant Lynch. He's forward to the 14-yard line. Here's a third and eight from the 14-yard line. Barker, the quarterback, goes to the middle of the field, setting up a straight-on field goal attempt. The great quarterbacks are not the ones that always go for the home run. They're the ones that realize they've got four downs to make 10 yards. Just get 10 and start all over again. My job was just create positive yards, whether it was just through dumping it down to running back, hitting a tight end, going for the big play, whatever it was, just let's create positive yards down the field and, and try not to use up as much time. But put ourselves in a position to, uh, to get that field goal. And I had all the confidence in the world. We've done it so many times. And coming back like that, I think everybody realized that we weren't going we to lose that game that night. I mean, as soon as you step on the field, for me, everything went quiet. You know, it was just tunnel vision. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, this is, this is what it's about. You know, Van Tiffin, Philip Doyle. I mean, th this, is, this is it. You know, I knew I wasn't going to miss. The snap and hold's going to be there. The blocking's going to be there. All I had to do was, you know, make it. And kickers are a little bit different than everybody else. They do the crossword puzzles. They have a lot, a lot of just free time, to, you know, by themselves. Um, but when it came down to kicking field goals, and, and you just knew it about him, he had this mentality about him that he's going to get the job done. This is, this is my moment. You know, this is going to be a lot of fun when I make this kick. The game and the situation was so high stress for all involved, even the usually stoic Gene Stallings was nervous. They called timeout, and Coach Stallings called us over to the sidelines, and, and you could tell he was nervous. You know, he was like, hey, guys, we got to block. You guys got to block. You got to get the hold. You got to kick. And Pete and Mario, and I'll never forget this, looked at him and said, Coach, we do this every day in practice. He looked at him and said, you know, you're right. Just go out there. It will be a 31-yard field goal attempt. That's where they're going to line it up. Alabama. Everybody holding their breath. A minute 16 to go. The snap, the spot, the kick. It's good. It's good. It's good. With a minute and 12 seconds to go. It is good. And Alabama has taken a 29-28 lead over the Georgia Bulldogs. But there are still 72 seconds left in this football game. Perfect snap by Justin Lewis. 
Ryan Beal, good hold. And the clock is just upright. You're right, Eli. A minute 12 seconds. That's a lifetime with a guy like Eric Sauer. On first down, Zyre uses the shuttle pass again to Hines Ward. He gains 14 before Eric Turner brings him down inbounds. Clock stops to move the chains. Zyre hits German for a six yard gain and he's out of bounds stopping the clock. Georgia attempts the shuttle pass again, but the tied defense won't get fooled again. Cedric Samuel, Kelvin Moore and Ralph Staten with the tackle. The dogs are in a hurry now. Zyre looks for Jeff Thomas, but the pass is too hot to handle. Fourth down for Georgia. One more stop, and the Tide can celebrate. Zyre's back to pass, but it's too high. Bama has completed the comeback and has an epic victory. Gene Stallings' favorite play. Parker kneels on the ball, and it's over. What a win for the Tide. It was, it was amazing how um, even people after that game came up to me, and, I, and, I, and it's amazing that whole next so many weeks and, and just not even until the end of the year, all the way through even today, people come up and say, man, my favorite game all time outside of 92, the national championship game is that 94 Georgia game. Just the atmosphere, what it was. I'd never seen Alabama fans as loud, as crazy, as excited. What a performance. And what a win for Jay Barker and Alabama. Bama would go on to an undefeated season in 94 and fell just one point shy of possibly playing for another national championship. The players in the Georgia-Alabama game would cross paths in several different places. Opponents in the game, Deshae Townsend and Heinz Ward, went on to be teammates in the NFL, winning two Super Bowl rings with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Alabama defensive coordinator Kirby Smart was a redshirt freshman defensive back for the Bulldogs. Alabama 29, Georgia 28. A game for the ages and a Crimson Classic. For the Bryant Museum, I'm Gary Harris.